From losing a yacht to a dog to much of her family, the life of Queen Elizabeth II was filled with heartbreak. Queen Elizabeth II reigned from February 6, 1952 to September 8, 2022. That's a long, long time, and unless you're over 70 years old, it's impossible to even remember an era before she was sitting on the throne. However, her becoming a queen was far from a sure thing. According to Time, Princess Elizabeth was actually third in the line of succession and was already well on her way toward a nice life largely out of the public eye, something that might not have been unwelcome since she was reportedly a fairly shy person. However, events conspired to steer her away from relative seclusion. When King George V died in 1936, his primary successor was King Edward VIII, who left the throne before the end of the year due to his relationship with commoner Wallace Simpson. As a result, Elizabeth's father and King George V's second youngest son, Albert, the Duke of York, was forced to step up as King George VI. This, in turn, meant that she would one day succeed him. The private stuttering George VI disliked the idea of being a king, and shy, young Elizabeth now found herself the center of the kingdom's attention. Within the course of one year, she lost her beloved grandfather, and her life and future were permanently upended. The thing about kings and queens is that they only get the crown after the current incumbent either steps down or dies. This means that Princess Elizabeth became the queen after the death of her father. King George VI suffered from significant health problems and died on February 6, 1952, at only 56 years old. The 25-year-old Elizabeth and her husband, Prince Philip, had just embarked on a series of international visits and were in Kenya when the news reached them. Just like that, long before the couple had expected, young Elizabeth was Her Majesty the Queen. I can give you my heart. Both Elizabeth and Philip took the news hard. Navy man Philip didn't much care for the demands of his newfound role as the Queen's husband, which required relocating to Buckingham Palace and essentially destroyed his own career prospects. According to The Guardian, the news was pretty hard on Elizabeth as well. She managed to keep up appearances until she boarded the plane that would take them back to Britain. On the plane, she remained calm, but fellow passengers reportedly couldn't help noticing that, at one point, she locked herself in the plane's bathroom to weep in peace. On November 20, 1992, Windsor Castle, one of the Queen's residences, took massive damage in a devastating fire. The castle is a massive and well-equipped site that usually has its own fire brigade, but as misfortune would have it, the fire started during renovations, and fire alarms weren't working. As a result, the flames began when a spotlight started a blaze that took 15 hours to extinguish and caused $47.5 million in damages that took five years to fix. 150 firemen have fought the blaze for nine hours. The Queen was obviously alarmed when she learned of the situation and arrived in the scene while flames were still raging. Incredibly, the aftermath of the tragedy was arguably even fierier than the incident itself. The castle, like other similar properties, was so valuable that insurance companies wouldn't touch it with a five-mile pole. The initial impression was that the government would pay for fixing it. However, subsequent discussions called attention to the significant cost of maintaining the royal family. In the end, the Queen agreed to finance 70% of the restoration herself. She also started paying income taxes and began placing restrictions on the way the government financed members of the royal family. The fire at Windsor Castle wasn't the only thing that went wrong in 1992. Queen Elizabeth II referred to the year 1992 as Annus Horribilis, Latin for the terrible year. She said in a speech during the 40th anniversary of her reign, 1992 is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure. It has turned out to be an annus horribilis. The main theme of 1992 was a vast array of royal PR disasters that kept piling up. According to the Los Angeles Times, the scandals that shook the monarchy that year included the divorce of the Queen's daughter, Princess Anne. It was also clear that the same fate was awaiting Prince Charles and Princess Diana thanks to the scandalous book, Diana, Her True Story. According to the New York Times, the princess herself had secretly collaborated with the author. Somehow, all of this wasn't enough, and Prince Andrew's marriage to Duchess Sarah Ferguson, popularly known as Fergie, was also in dire straits after compromising poolside photographs of her and her financial manager surfaced. With three of her four children embroiled in public scandals of varying severity, it's no surprise that the Queen had no particular love for the year 1992, and she also made clear that she considered the media attention rather too harsh. She said at one point, I dare say that history will take a slightly more moderate view than that of some contemporary commentators. 
One of the biggest crises the British monarchy faced during the reign of Queen Elizabeth II was the aftermath of Princess Diana's death. The heartbreaking death of Princess Diana happened on August 31, 1997, when a car carrying her and Dodi Al-Fayed crashed in the middle of the Pont de l'Alma tunnel. The accident killed the couple and their driver and prompted a number of conspiracy theories about Princess Diana's death. The Queen initially thought Diana had merely been injured and is said to have quipped, someone must have greased the brakes. When the nature of the tragedy eventually dawned, the Queen was quick to make arrangements and shelter Diana's sons, Prince William and Prince Harry, from the barrage of news. She also decided to stay with them at Balmoral Castle, prioritizing the family over public relations despite pressure to do otherwise. Unfortunately, this means she failed to address the situation to the public. For six extraordinary days, shock was followed by grief, which hardened to anger. Diana had recently divorced Prince Charles, and her relationship with the royal family wasn't amazing. But the people still loved the princess. When Queen Elizabeth II said nothing, the public turned against her, and the media threw fuel on the flames. In a matter of days, the future of the crown was hanging in the balance. Queen Elizabeth II ultimately managed to undo some of the damage with a heartfelt and personal televised speech, but tensions lingered on. It is not easy to express a sense of loss. On December 11, 1997, a peculiar scene took place when Queen Elizabeth II was seen crying during the send-off ceremony to a yacht. In all fairness, this wasn't just any old vessel. The royal family had a long tradition of owning their personal yachts, ever since the HMY Royal Escape in 1660, in fact. The decommissioned ship was the latest and last in this line, known as the Royal Yacht Britannia. The ship had been in service since 1953, and its official website reveals that it acted as a comfortable home away from home for the Queen and her family, both in official functions and private escapades. The Royal Yacht was the only place where they could get proper privacy. It was likely important to Queen Elizabeth II not only because she spent so much time aboard it, but also because she and Prince Philip had had a hand in its design. Prince Philip said of the yacht, All the other places we live in have been built by predecessors. These days, the yacht that used to be so important to the Queen is docked in Edinburgh, Scotland, where it serves as a tourist attraction, hotel, and event venue. Losing a parent or sibling is hard, but losing both within a few weeks of each other is a whole other level of loss. Unfortunately for Queen Elizabeth II, she had to go through this in 2002, when her sister died on February 9th and her mother passed away soon afterwards. Queen Elizabeth II released a statement shortly after Princess Margaret died, revealing that Margaret had experienced a stroke and passed away at the King Edward VII Hospital. According to People, 71-year-old Margaret had health issues for a while before her death. She was a much wilder and more social person than the reserved Queen. But despite the princess's glamorous lifestyle and the pair's occasionally turbulent relationship when they were younger, they were close. The queen didn't have too long to grieve, or rather, she soon had to do it doubly as much. On May 30th, she lost another close relative when her mother, 101-year-old Queen Elizabeth, died. It must have been very traumatic for her. The queen mother was a beloved member of the royal family, and before her funeral, Queen Elizabeth II gave a rare speech in which she praised her mother, saying... Over the years, I have met many people who have had to cope with family loss, sometimes in the most tragic of circumstances. So I count myself fortunate that my mother was blessed with a long and happy life. Queen Elizabeth II was so famous for her love of corgi dogs that there's even an animated movie called The Queen's Corgi. According to the BBC, the Queen's family had corgis when she was a child, and she got her own dog, Susan, when she turned 18. Susan is obviously long dead and rests under a gravestone that her owner designed personally. Since then, Queen Elizabeth II owned more than 30 pups of the same breed. The last one of them, unfortunately, died in 2018, which means that she had also lost over 30 dogs. The monarch stopped breeding pure corgis in 2015, but nevertheless remained in the dog game. By the time of her death in 2022, she owned two corgis, a dachshund corgi mix known as a dorgi, and a cocker spaniel. The Queen's corgi game was usually treated as a private matter, but if you think that a monarch with a whole bunch of dogs is too high and mighty to mourn the death of one, well, that's not exactly the case. According to Vanity Fair, Queen Elizabeth II was absolutely grief-stricken when one of her dorgies died in 2021. On April 9, 2021, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, died at Windsor Castle. The Queen's husband was 99 years old. 
The news arrived in the form of a statement from Buckingham Palace, which read, It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen announces the death of her beloved husband. The royal family joins with people around the world in mourning his loss. Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip were married for 73 years. Though Philip was quite reluctant to step into the highly restrictive life of a queen's consort, Nevertheless, he stood faithfully by the Queen's side, and Elizabeth deeply grieved the loss of the man she counted on for so long. That mischievous, inquiring twinkle was as bright at the end as when I first set eyes on him. According to ABC News, she turned 95 just weeks after Philip's demise and addressed her grief in her birthday statement, saying, While as a family we are in a period of great sadness, it has been a comfort to us all to see and hear the tributes paid to my husband from those within the United Kingdom, the Commonwealth, and around the world.